Hi, Karina here, your Lucid Living Coach. I'm in Tahoe. I'm on my way to Idaho to see the solar eclipse. So I want to do a little video. It's crazy. It was actually just like super sunny and I was sitting outside and I was looking at the, the solar eclipse um, chart uh, for the 21st and then I was going to do my video outside and then all of a sudden it started hailing and raining and thundering like out of nowhere. Like, that's super Uranus energy. But, um, yeah, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about the solar eclipse that is going to happen on the 21st on Monday um, at, I guess it'll be complete darkness, at around 11.33 a.m. Like, what a beautiful number that is. Go love him. They have, let's see, three, three, six, seven, eight. So it's an eight. And um, I'm seeing a lot of eights uh, with this, which leads me to believe that it's going to be like a super like transformative, um, digging really deep energy for the collective. Um, we have not had um, a total eclipse all the way across the United States since 1918. So it's been quite some time. So this is the first in my lifetime to be able to see it. So I'm super excited and super excited about the energy that it's going to open up. Um, you know, it's a huge portal, not only for the light workers, but Leo type energy as well as Aquarius. And I was noticing that on the day and the time, kind of like I pulled the, the birth chart for the exact solar eclipse in Idaho, because that's um, on one of the spots that are going to be um, a complete darkness. And um, I noticed there is a T-square between Venus, Jupiter, Pluto, and Uranus, and they're all cardinal energy. Okay. Um, the ascendant is in Libra, which is all about balance, harmony, um, partnership. Um, I think a lot of like soulmates or twin flames are going to be reunited or past, um, soul family. Uh, and also Uranus is opposing it in the seventh house. Okay. So these two energies are kind of arguing, you know, they're kind of arguing back and forth. Like, okay, I, you know, the ascendant I want and Jupiter sitting on the ascendant. I want to expand. I want to connect. I want, um, connection. But then on the other hand, in the seventh house, which is funny because, um, Libra rules the seventh house and Uranus is sitting there in Aries. So it's like, but you know, what about me? And like, kind of putting aside like our ego and being able to find that balance, maybe not being so, um, I don't know, uh, unpredictable, you know, or detached and being more like about family. And it has a lot to do with the North Node and uh, Leo video that I did about embracing that Leo heart energy. And I think that that's what this is about. Um, Pluto is actually down on the IC and the IC is the bottom, most darkest part of our chart. So it's the deep, like the things that people don't see. And it's very personal and it's hidden. And Pluto is like the transformation in it. You know, it's super small, it's super, you know, it's far out there, but like as the planets, um, go expand out, that's the deeper parts of the onion. So the outer layer of the onion is the ones that we uh, see, like the ascendant and the sun. And then as you start unpeeling, you start seeing, okay, the Venus, the Mars, the, you know, Saturn, like you see, and then the further out planets, like uh, Pluto, which isn't even considered a planet, but it's important. Um, Chiron, which is the wounded healer. Like these are all the smaller outer planets that you can't, that aren't so apparent and obvious. So, and that is actually opposing um, Venus, which is on the MC, which is the highest part of the chart. Um, and it's in cancer. 
So Venus being on the MC, it's like we're wanting to come out and we're wanting to share our love, like with the world. We want to show our values and help others uh, see their values and um, kind of embrace the home, like, because that's opposite, like, too, because the, the IC in Capricorn is like between the third and the fourth house, fourth house is home, as well as cancer being on the MC. Uh, that is ruled by the fourth house of home. And so I think there's going to be like a lot of healing um, through like our past, our past um, karma and um, lives and bringing in new, uh, you know, soul, soul energy, uh, maybe soul family that's going to help us guide us um, on the right path. So that's kind of my take on that T-square. Um, T-squares, you, you know, are difficult energies and they're not easy, you know. So you have like this, you know, Venus opposed Pluto, you know, and then you have Jupiter there trying to be like, you know, bring harmony between the two. And then you have Jupiter opposed Uranus and then you have Venus trying to bring some harmony between the two in battle. So it's just kind of balancing these energies it's really focused on the four points in a chart. So the I see, which is your, your rising and it's what the world sees. And then you have your, I mean, I'm sorry, your AC, which is your rising. Um, and it's the, it's the, um, uh, Eastern side because the sun rises on the East and it sets on the West. And then you have Jupiter and Uranus and Venus they are all above um, the, the ascendant descendant line, which it's trying to contain its energy because it's 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 already out. So it it seeks that balance to kind of contain the energy. And then um, uh, Pluto is the only one uh, below that line, which it's trying to express itself. So it's trying to express this. Um, this, you know, the healing, uh, the Pluto, um, Capricorns, the work, maybe all this work that we've been putting in. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I've just been working and working towards like, like, you know, creating something new for my life, um, because I, I want change, but I feel like I'm not, not very getting very far, you know, but it's like, I feel like I'm constantly working. Um, I think for a lot of people, um, especially the fire signs, I don't know, something keeps telling me the fire signs, you know, I've kind of been having this feeling by even the fire signs that I've known ha has since 2012, 2013 have been going through like this, um, this abyss type energy in like the hero's journey. Right. So we're all on this, on, the, on, on this evolution of soul. Right. And it's like, you have to experience like the lower parts and the darker parts and the shadow side of life in order to, to realize and be humble and to be a light worker. Right. So I feel like all these new emerging light workers are about to like break, break free and break out and get their break. Okay. So I feel like a lot of the fire signs, um, especially the Leos are going to have like a little switch in energy. Uh, the one that, uh, we experienced in like 2012. Um, and that's just my intuition, um, speaking that because, you know, the best, the best leaders, are those that have empathy and compassion. And that has been through a lot because it's hard to, to be able to help and guide people through a dark period if they never experienced it for themselves. Um, what else? Okay. So I talked about the squares. Now let's talk about something amazing. They're called the grand trines and we have the sun and the moon and Mars. 
and the North Node all in Leo. Now, the Mars, the Sun, and the Moon are in a grand trine with Saturn, Uranus. So those are all kind of flowing and working well together. So it's like bringing that up, um, bringing your light and um, and your your inner truth and 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 manifesting it into the physical world. Um, and Uranus is the future. You know, it's a it's a future type, futuristic, like moving type energy. So that also speaks on what I was saying before about people and especially the light workers like emerging themselves out and being able to be doing the work in the world and physically manifesting that. Um, we also have Jupiter sextile uh, Mars. Okay, so Jupiter is the expansion, and it's in Libra, of partnership, and Mars is the masculine um, cardinal energy, which they're both cardinal. They're, they're all about, like, um, you know, just, you know, bringing um, partnerships back, you know, friendships back, maybe, you know, past friendships or things that, you know, you just, you know, fizzled out. and you know, they're going to return. Um, and it's really good, I think, for healing um, as well. So also it's Mercury retrograde. So that might also bring back, uh, you know, past relationships um, back into your life, maybe to get closure or to heal or maybe to have a new start. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. So th the Uranus, the sun, and the moon during the eclipse are all going to be at 28 degrees. Mm, do you have anything in your chart that's 28 degrees or close to it? That will probably be um, highlighted for this eclipse. Um, 28. Chiron as well. It's very close. It's at 27 um, in like 59 minutes. So that's pretty close. The Chiron energy. Um, eight is also, uh, you know, the transformation like Pluto, uh, two is, um, uh, manifesting into the world, um, and, um, twin flames and partnerships, just like the Libra with Jupiter and then eight, nine, 10, 10 plus, um, you know, one plus zero is one. So that's new beginnings. Um, that's kind of my take on that with the sacred, um, you know, numerology and stuff like that. Two is also the sacred mother, balancing of your energies. Yeah, so it's all about like finding balance in relationships with others, partnerships with others, being able to um, shine your light. Um, and I think that is about all as far as the chart that I wanted to talk about and that I, that I've seen, but I don't know. I, I, I'm just feeling like a really good energy, um, about this eclipse. I feel that it's going to be like, Oh, like kind of awakening, uh, the collective to, um, why they're here and their soul's journey. You know, it's like, I, I feel things. And then when I look at the chart, it kind of like explains it pretty well. So it's just kind of a confirmation for me, but, um, I would like to pick a card, um, for today and for maybe the solar eclipse and see if we can get even a more, um, confirmation. You know, it's like we have intuition and then we have the chart and then we have Oracle cards, which I have Oracle cards. I just got my first tarot deck. Um, not really. Uh, knowing exactly um, how to interpret those yet. So I'm just going to stick with the oracles for now. Uh-oh. We don't want to jump out here. Uh-oh. They all want to jump out. There's a whole stack. Let's see. So it was like this one that flipped over. Intuition. Intuition. 
So I love this, this card. You know, I actually got, I think a birthday card, um, in like 1999 or 2000, I think for my friend, Jessica, I think it looked just like this. It's card number 36. Okay, let me just read that. See what it has to say for us. Okay, so you just seem to have a knack for knowing what's going to work. Your creative process is unique to you, and you just get started and magic happens. You have a lot of endurance, and you're a hard worker. Once you get focused on a project, you don't stop. You are a transcender and you seem to understand what people love. You are very forward thinking. You are being reminded that you have your own inner voice guiding you always. Tap into the wisdom and allow yourself this higher perspective. So nice. Yeah, it's just like tapping in to our creative, our um, our soul self um, to spread the love and the light and using this intuition, you know, because sometimes we could question our intuitions um, to see if they're correct. We'll go looking at, you know, charts, birth charts or picking a card. But it's like spirit is saying your intuition serves you right. You know, this is like. Act on that, you know, whatever your inside is telling you, your gut. Go with that. All right. Well, I wish you guys the best solar eclipse, and I hope that helped. Um, click my link below if you'd like to support me, and click the subscribe button if you'd like to continue getting awesome astrology videos and um, light working videos, and um, press like if you liked it. All right, guys. Take care. Peace. Love you.